Hello everyone. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to do steady state uh, thermal analysis. So here we go. And uh, steady state means when the temperatures have reached their final stage or status and they are not going to change anymore. And uh, here we are going to uh, look at a simple 2D analysis. And um, Let's go ahead and make something very simple, like a uh, basically uh, rectangular uh, plate with a hole in it that we had in the past for uh, stress concentration. We're going to define our conditions differently this time, but uh, the shape is going to be uh, very similar. So here we create this object and then uh, we provide the dimensions. So let's say again something similar 50 by 100 and let's make it symmetric again. And then we have a circle at the origin with a radius of, let's say, 25, diameter of 25, right? And then here we go and create a, a surface from this sketch. And we apply to this sketch and we generate it so that's my surface now i go ahead and perform uh, the um, thermal analysis so here we are the first thing it is asking you is the thickness of the object so if you click here it is asking for thickness let's say two mil is the thickness of the object here for the material this uh, structure still is good for now so let's go ahead and generate a, a mesh and uh but uh, remember one thing that we forgot to do yes you're right what was it to the analysis so i need to go back here and make sure when i'm in geometry i change this analysis to 2d right because if we don't do it then um, we are going to have problems so here i'm going to update the project so the model will also be affected by the fact that I'm allowing 2D analysis, not 3D. So make sure if you change something here, you update your project so everywhere is going to be affected by it. So, and uh, here you see clearly the mesh is not good around the circle, so I can definitely go ahead and add some refinement around uh, this area here and regenerate the mesh or update the mesh hopefully i have some better mesh yeah that is a little bit better if i don't want super accurate results uh, and then here you have your initial temperature so let's say the initial temperature is 10 degrees celsius and then here you have your analysis setting again do you want to apply everything in one time or do you want the temperature to or whatever condition that you have to changes versus time here since we are in a steady state really uh, we are okay with this so the loads that we want to apply we can apply radiation convection temperature you can apply all sorts of heat so let's say for example we have a uh, constant uh, temperature to be coming from the inside of this right or we can say heat flux to come out of this or anything for that matter so let's say we apply a temperature at this edge and the temperature is let's say 100 celsius right while the uh, initial temperature is 10 so this guy is always at 100 and then we can apply convections right let's say at these three edges 
I'm going to apply convection and for convection I need a film coefficient uh, which depends on the fluid and uh, the velocity of the fluid so for stagnant uh, air it's anywhere between let's say 2 to 25 or something like that so here I'm going to use let's say 15 then this is the temperature of that fluid let's say 15 celsius or let's say 25 celsius is the temperature of the air around this uh, sheet metal and then we have here under heat we can have heat flux perfectly insulated heat flow and so on so let's say this edge here is perfectly insulated right those three edges are subjected to air convection and the temperature here can be held fixed at um, 100 and then for the solution i can look at the uh, temperature distribution i can look at all sorts of other things right for example i can look at the directional heat flux i can look at the total heat flux i can look at the errors now we're going to talk about errors later when um, we talk about the calculations but the most important thing is i assume for us is temperature and probably total heat flux then we click on solve here i solved it to save the video time and this is the temperature that you see gradually going down from uh, 100 to 25 you can use a probe tool and see this temperature is dropping and you can look at the heat flux and the direction of heat flux is of course uh, perpendicular to the direction of the temperature field right so as the temperature drops faster you have more heat flux in that direction so uh the other thing I want to emphasize is when under analysis setting, you change the number of steps. This is not really the end time of the simulation, okay? So if you change the number of steps, it's not gonna affect anything. So here I have done uh, the simulation in one step, 10 steps and 100 steps. And clearly you can see putting them side by side, that the final result in terms of steps is not going to change because steps are literally uh, the steps that you take to go from initial condition to the final condition right but you might say what about the end time is this going to change something so if i change this from 1 to 10 and i rerun the analysis am i going to get a different temperature distribution compared to what you just showed me and here I'm going to take a snapshot of this with that end time and show you that if I take this and copy it and put it right next to one of these let's say uh, maybe here Turn the text tool off. So here. And if I put it side by side, so this is one second. This guy here in the middle is 10 seconds. And if you look at the results, they are the same. Because this is a steady state analysis and it goes until it reaches basically to steady temperatures that do not change versus time so my recommendation is for this simple analysis do not change any of these these are mostly used for dynamics analysis and the problems that have nonlinear conditions which we'll get to them in one of my future videos so hopefully this uh, video was useful to you and i will see you in my next video thank you